Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be talking about Philip K. Dick's Breakfast at Twilight, which was published in 1953. The story starts with a nuclear explosion, and this family finds themselves in a total wasteland, and soldiers coming into their house looking for survivors. Um, and they're, of course, the family's totally baffled, totally confused, and eventually they find out that the missiles that had hit their house were actually from the future, but the force of the bombs were so strong that they blasted them into the future when the war would actually occur. Um, so they come up with a, I guess inadvertently it becomes a strategy um, like it's not something it's something that they're terrified of a prospect that they're terrified of but they don't really know what else to do of course but they, they figure that okay if we let the next missile come that maybe it will blast them back into their present time and and then it does as they as they hoped but then when they get back, they discover that their house is completely obliterated, even when they're in their own present time. And so the father, and this is the part of the story where I admit even to this day, after I revisit it, it really does not make any sense to me. Um, but the, the father figures, he, he comes to the conclusion that it is an issue with the central heating system in their house. And that was the reason for this, um, which doesn't really seem congruous or doesn't really seem consistent with anything else. It doesn't even really seem consistent with uh, the message or, you know, the sociological message, the philosophical issues that Philip K. Dick is trying to raise. It seems like a, almost like a, a punchline for a joke or some, like some weird anticlimactic kind of point in the story where you it kind of peters down for me and perhaps it's it's a weak point in the story um but however i will say that 95 percent of it is incredibly strong for me and it taught me a lot about my own writing as well because i think that one thing and i've said this before that is probably the most the most powerful about Philip K. Dick to me, and way more powerful than my own writing, is that he stays true to his own his own genre much better. Um, he's better able to um, think in a very uh, logical way and be able to address sociological issues, uh, philosophical issues like war, because he was very much against war. And take them apart in a, and as it should be, in a very scientific and very gritty and very, uh, very matter-of-fact type of way. Whereas I, I think because I was trying so hard to be a lot like the, um, a lot like the classical writers, um, you know, I was obsessed with Dante and a lot of the fairy tale writers. I think, you know, I, I think to this day, I still struggle with this kind of metaphysical and abstract tangents that the writing would go on and I wouldn't know how to ground the the story really in society. Society has to really be the core of I think every sci-fi novel, right? What do people do? Why do they do it? How do they do it? And this story never ceases to do that. I mean it it never it's never lacking in in clearness and specificity in um understanding human nature, understanding people, understanding how they are, how they think, you know, and, and for example, a lot of the, a lot of the scenes with the, for example, like when the soldiers are coming in and they, and their, their terror, their, the looks on their faces, the, the feelings of despair, um, the, that's just exactly like, that's really the meat of what makes that genre come to life. That, woke up a part of my brain that had just been asleep for a while. And it was uh, also incredibly eerie as well. Just a total nightmare of a, of a situation 
that um, really overshadows anything that could be come up with in fiction. You know, all the macabre, silly stuff that you see in gothic horror doesn't amount to that. I mean, it's the real deal, and I would highly recommend this story.